In this next little section of our routing uh, portion of our NSXV series, we're going to be focusing more on the high availability aspect of things. We're not going to be focusing on first hop redundancy protocols like HSRP or anything like that for the setup because remember the distributed logical router is distributed, meaning that every one of the ESXi hosts that the DLR has been pushed to is going to be online. So in the event that the a, a one ESXi host goes down, maybe you have high availability set up for your ESXi hosts in a cluster and you need to evacuate a couple of failed VMs on that host over to another host, they get rebooted and then get associated to the logical switch. All that's well and great, right? Now we actually do have, we come back over here to the topology. If we look in here on the compute or on the, um, the cluster, we look at this and give that a couple seconds to do its thing. We have DRS turned on, but we have availability disabled, right? High availability is actually turned off right now just to, because it's not turned on. Now, in the case that it we were to turn it on, if any one of these hosts fails, guess what? We deal with it. Now, you'll notice down here at the management side of the house that we only have one host, host four. So in the event that host four has a failure, what happens to the DLR, the Ed Services Gateway, or the NSX controller node? What happens to them? Well, they fail, right? Because the host itself failed. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm going to, oops, wrong, that's NSXT. Let me go and we're going to log into our host and we're gonna go ahead and deploy a new ESXi host. Now I'm not gonna walk you through all the little details, but the goal here is to focus on deploying a new host. We'll take a couple of minutes and just get him spun up. We'll get him connected. And then what I'm gonna, my goal is to then push the NSX bits down to the new host. And then we're going to be able to put the cluster configuration in place so that in the event that I need to push data or push VMs from one host to the other, I'll be able to do that. Because we first wanna have high availability at the host level, then we can have high availability at the VM level. Once we have that, then we can focus on doing both the DLR and ESG HA. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video, or at least later on in this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna go ahead and next, I'm showing you this again only because of the fact that it's relevant to the discussion. And we're gonna say this is gonna be host 2-ESXi5. Click next. We're gonna put this on QNAP. I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy four CPUs. We're going to expose, uh, enable hot CPU add and expose all the CPU capabilities we have. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be 8192 for memory. 40 gig hard drive is more than sufficient right here. We don't really need much more than that, but I'll, I don't even know what I gave host for. Let me go back over here and quickly check what host four has for hard drive space. I don't actually remember what he has. Uh, 100, so we'll go ahead and just make sure he's got 100 gigs. Now there's no storage high availability, but we're not really too concerned about storage right now. We're just gonna go ahead and get him, we'll go ahead and add a couple more network adapters and get this squared away. CD drive, we're gonna go ahead and choose the that guy, and then I'm gonna go to next and then finish, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the config done to where this guy is good to go. So I'm actually gonna pause at this point, and then we're gonna add the host to vCenter and get that squared away. All right, so our additional host has been added. I'm gonna jump over here to our host, or our vCenter, and I'm gonna right click in here I'm gonna add a, uh, sorry, not the host itself, the cluster. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add a host. And the host, I dc1-host5.lab.local. And let me just make sure that there's a DNS entry for that or else I will be completely wasting my time and effort. Host five, boom, already there, good to go. I planned ahead. So root and the password. Click on next, we do get a prompt, click okay. 
we're going to go ahead and add that into into here. It's going to take a couple minutes for it to get added. But once it's there, we'll be in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and take this bad boy out of maintenance mode. And then I'm going to add it to our um, and because it's because NSX is already installed on this host the because we're adding the host to the cluster it'll automatically get the NSX install to happen so we'll give but see that's actually gonna fail it should fail because the distributed switch isn't there yet so I'm, I'm gonna go over here to I'm sorry networking and I'm gonna click on the VDS actions add hosts add a host to it new host gonna add host 5 click OK click next VM kernel adapter I'm gonna go ahead and assign the uplink to the management or the uplink get all this squared away I'm doing and there in the, in the event that you have a question as to why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it is so you guys can see how it, I would set it up and then we're gonna go ahead and associate that to the management connection next next and then finish so that should get added to the the port group which it does sorry I'm sorry to the connection so now we're good to go there I'm gonna to go to you notice that all of a sudden the all the NSX bits are now squared away I go to the configure tab go down to VMX kernels and we even get a VMX VXLAN connection coming down which is what we wanted to have so VXLAN got automatically I'm sorry NSX got automatically pushed to the host as soon as it was done doing its thing so now what I'll do is we don't have any shared storage between these hosts which is okay because when I go to do any of my additional configs I'll be and I could there, there's certain things that I can do in terms of operations that will allow me to come in and do HA. But you would really want shared storage. So in the event that there's a failure, you could move stuff around and things like that. So all this stuff is working out pretty well. So I'm going to come back over here to... Um, let me just check on the host, make sure that I have enough reuse or resource utilization. So I've got barely any CPU used, and i got 10 gigs of RAM. i got about 4... And change left. This guy's got eight gigs of RAM, so he should be fine. I should be able to come back over here to networking and security, and then I should be able to go and click on NSX edges. And we're first going to do the DLR. We're going to do HA for the DLR. I'm going to click on the DLR, and on the configure tab here, we have high availability. Now, the way that high availability will work is we are going to configure it by clicking on edit and then you simply turn on the HA status. We're going to turn it on and we're going to go ahead and say logging is turned on, logging level is info. I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to come down here so it's starting to put do deploy a second OVF template so it's going to add an additional edge device to the the host that we were just looking at host for. Now, when it comes to how the configuration is set up here, you'll notice that we have connected to the VDS management port. So if I was to come in here and edit this, I can actually choose a different connection. So I can edit this, and I can say, do you want to associate to a logical switch? So we can create an HA switch that'll allow communication between our interfaces to allow the high availability or I can just leave it the way it is. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it the way it is and cancel. So now if I go back over here, we can see HA is enabled. Come over here to hosts and clusters and we can see that Edge 3 job data has been deployed and it is in the process of coming online. He's going to have the same capabilities deployed as the DLR already does. It's going to be a replica of the job. The cool thing about this is this is a backup, right? So once VMware Tools is done being installed and we have all that connectivity in place, this guy is ready to go and he's operational. So if I was to come in here and go launch web console, we can see that the box is getting rebooted. 
and once he's rebooted we will have an operational configuration so this is going to be a duplicate of the other host or the, I'm sorry the other DLR and that'll allow us to have HA set up for this so I'm gonna go ahead and pause while this is finishing its and there we go so DC1 DLR if we come back over here you'll notice that we have DC1 DLR 1-0 which is this is the main one right then we come down here to this guy we have DC1 DLR 1-1 now you notice the IP address here is 169254.1.2 if I was to click on this DLR and if we were to come in here and say show interfaces if we come down a little bit we should see I don't know if it's going to show up here. Yeah, it's not going to. We do a show IP route. You notice how we have a 169254 subnet right here to the right of my mouse. I notice the IP address is 169254.1.1. Come over here on this guy. We go ahead and log into him. We do a show IP route. You'll and this one here is a little bit different because of the fact that it's a clone. This is basically the HA device of the other one. So now that we have that in play, I just wanted to show you that it was working. I'm going to do the same thing under networking and security for the edge services gateway. Again, this is high availability. And normally what you would do with uh, something like this, let me go back over here to hosting clusters. Normally what you would do is this guy right here would get put on to host 5. Because you would have host 4 and host 5 would have a communication with each other set up. So what I could do in order for this to work in a uh, in an NHA setup like we have over here, I would need to turn vSAN on, and I don't have the devices set up to do support vSAN. I don't have the extra NICs to to pull this off. So normally, this guy right here, which is our main device, would get placed on one host this guy right here would get placed on another one so and then you would use load balancing to take care of that and DRS and all that good stuff but if I tried to migrate this guy to another host click next and host 4 it's like well how how can I move it over it's not set up for it As a matter of fact the primary reason for that is if I come over to host 4 and go to configure and VM kernel adapters I don't have um, I don't have vMotion set up between the two. So if I was to go ahead and add networking, for example, VM kernel adapter, and we're going to choose an existing network, we're going to say vMotion, click on OK, click Next, we're going to say vMotion, set an IPv4, I'm going to go ahead and this will be 10.1.3.14 slash 24, click on next and then finish I'll do the same thing to 5 I'll add a VM kernel adapter I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the existing network of vMotion and vMotion here this one here is gonna be 10.1.3.15 uh, slash 24 and click next and then finish so theoretically speaking, now I should be able to be motion between the two. So if I was to click on this guy, right click, and go to migrate, click next, I should see, and it's not going to let me do it. And we could select a cluster, but it's not going to let us do it the way we want to. There's just a, a number of issues that are in play right now that won't let me do it, so which, which is fine. No big deal. No harm, no foul. Let me go back over here to networking and security, and we're going to deploy HA for our, S, uh, our ESG. So here on the ESG, I'm going to click on him. Same thing, I'm going to click on the configure tab, come down to high availability, and I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to turn it on, and it's asking me which VNIC do you want to use. I can use transit, it's fine, That's where that works. There's nothing else for me to use between the two in order for that to work so I'll just go ahead and do that 
the management IPs not required I'm gonna go, go ahead and click on save and now it's gonna go ahead and deploy that so this will take a couple of moments to to push as well if we scroll through here we might find and here's the deploy OBF template edge to job data 659-1 if I come over here to hosting clusters we can see that this guy here is getting deployed and he will get pushed onto host 4 so this will take a little bit of time and again this is high availability for it so basically what you're doing is you're providing a, another control VM that will be able to be placed on the devices that we need them to be placed on so that's going to get deployed we're going to and that one says that the power on virtual machine so the the host that we tried to deploy it on does not have sufficient memory resources to satisfy the reservation in other words if we look at host 4 go to the summary tab we can see that we're just about tapped out so we don't have enough resources available to deploy that so no big deal I can simply come over here to networking and security and turn the DLR capability off or I can bump up the memory utilization on the that device now the ESG if we look at this I believe the ESG takes a couple gigs of RAM actually let me look at the the settings here the ESG the VM let me go to edit oh, edit settings I can't do it from here let me go over here to networking and security but not be realize networking and security I don't have VR ops turned on that's why it's not gonna work if I was to deploy a uh, configuration failed configuration failed because failed to power it on the host does not have a sufficient memory the test failed on uh, so I'm gonna going to go ahead and acknowledge that so I'm going to click on the DLR I'm gonna to go to HA it says both the edge, uh, both edge device appliances are currently deployed in the same resource it's recommended to deploy them on different hosts and different data stores which goes back to my original point if I had a if I had storage configured correctly with a with both hosts associated to shared storage it'd be no big deal but I don't so I'm actually going to go ahead and click on high availability I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to just turn it off click on save and that will go ahead and rip that config off that box I'm going to go click on never hosting clusters and we'll notice that that DLR is now gone if I click up here the console has been disconnected I can no longer push that box so that DLR is now gone so if I was to do the same thing with the ed, ed services gateway you'd see that same thing so that's basically how that would work so it's going to push an additional control VM to the ESXi hosts and go from there that's one of the key things to keep in mind when we're taking a look at HA so it's meant to keep the control VMs highly available in the event that there is a, a underlying ESXi host failure that's okay you're gonna only lose one of your control VMs the other one will pick up for it right away and you'll be in good shape that ladies and gentlemen is how you would deploy this solution until next time guys thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video